Merry Christmas, everyone. We're taking out the key 88 again post Christmas. Made some changes that I had mentioned in my previous video with the key 88 uh, to change around the equipment a little bit and see how it might function differently. And I really liked this build a little better. Uh, as you can see there, we've got a 3v3 match. Uh, we have uh, two light fighters and a heavy. They have three light fighters, if I remember right. And it looks, uh, or two light fighters and a multi role, I think. But uh, it's going to be uh, an interesting match. It's going to be very pilot dependent, you know, how we do. And the first thing I want to do is snag this sidebar section really fast. In part because I want to zero in the guns. The 38, 37 millimeter and the 20s can be tricky uh, to get uh, the aim lined up on them. They don't have a very good auto aim statistic, which means you do have to be very careful about how you aim them. And also they have two different muzzle velocities, so it's a little bit like flying a Fock Wolf or something, you know, the 190, that you kind of have to be careful how you do it. But I feel pretty good I've got them dialed in. And the other reason I did that is because, you know, the planes on the other team are ones that I'm a little nervous on taking on. And so if I can get a little bit of an advantage, and sometimes coming into the zone late, you can get that advantage. Now, it also lets me gauge how good they are. If they had already capped this zone, I would know, you know, I, I'm in trouble. The fact that the zone is not capped yet tells me, and the fact there's a 109F on the DAC deck here tells me that um, I have a little bit of breathing room. And of course, all that careful zeroing in of the guns from the first zone just went to hell. Um, when you get up close like this, you may have noticed it's very, very difficult to get your guns to hit. Some people swear by nose guns, and that is true. But it doesn't really have anything to do with convergence or anything fancy like that. It, it has to do with the camera angle. Um, well, a long while ago, we had a mod that helped fix it, but uh, we don't anymore. But the bottom line is, um, you know, when you're shooting that close to you, what you're seeing on the screen is not accurate for where you're actually shooting at. And that becomes very tricky. So you want to kind of get that, especially in a plane like this with different muzzle velocities. You know, you want to get them out where you can. Knife fighting is easier with high volumes of guns. Um, but when you're in close with big cannons like this, it, it just kind of tends to go all over the map. So um, I've put the cruise speed paint on it, the chrome paint job, and I've also swapped over to an uprated engine instead of the uh, maximum boost, maximum speed change. And I've done that to kind of keep the cruise speed a little higher to get myself an extra second of boost time. And just in general, hopefully keep my overall speed a little higher. And again, the maneuverability on this plane is great. The altitude performance is excellent. You know, it goes up to 1,800 meters, which is, you know, allows it to take on Mustangs with relative ease. And it also turns better than they do. So it's not as fast as they are, obviously, but it's a good middle of the road plane. You know, and in a fight like this with a BF 109. Same deal. Uh, if he wants to turn fight me, I am more than happy to do that. I do have the ability to do that. If, if he wants to go extend and escape, I'll, I'll probably need to break off. My top speed can't match his. Even in a dive, it's not quite as good. You'll notice I've also changed um, a little bit of the map. I actually zeroed it in a little closer. I felt like I was getting a little overload in terms of what I could see down there. And I wanted the map to operate more as a sort of danger zone indicator. If I look at the map and there's a bunch of red or there's a red behind me, you need to be aware of it. But right now, we're just going to do what this plane is good at, which is stay up high and shell out lots of damage. And you'll see we just hit, or we're about to hit, Supremacy here, which is not great in this Christmas marathon. Because if you ever get Supremacy, you know, your chances of getting a candy decrease dramatically. Check out the rudder controls on this, just going over like that. And of course, the, the pitch and yaw control is excellent as well. It's just part of its great maneuverability. Now, uh, we've uh, kind of been talking about some things in Discord that I think are interesting. We've talked about uh, some of the difficulties of switching out equipment um, loads like this and, and figuring out what works best for a plane. It is expensive to do, or it can be. I do think you get a pretty decent idea without shelling out completely for the gear. You know, you don't have to roll ultimate gear with the exact stats you want to, to really be able to feel some of the differences in the plane. And, and this is a good example. Yeah, I've, I've swapped out uh, one of the equipment pieces, and I've swapped out the paint job on the plane. And you know, that cost me a token and, and a little bit of silver. And I can feel the plane works differently. And I'm like, yeah, this is more of what I wanted out of this 
plane, especially if I'm going to specialize it, which it is right now what I'm going to do. Now, pause. I don't know if you saw what I just did right there. We're going to back it up a little bit. Uh, I've knocked out the engine of this plane. So the Focke-Wulf 190 is where we're going. I'm trying to zero in the guns again because I've noticed I'm behind on that. And as I do it, he's about to stall out, right? And I caught his engine right there. So now his speed is going to just plummet. I don't know if you've ever been in a vertical with someone who is lower speed than you. And uh, you're trying to figure out, okay, how do I stay on them? How do we, how do we make this work? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to follow him up. And when it doesn't work, I'm going to loop the opposite direction from him. Okay, see he's turning left, I'm turning right. And I know he's going to nose over in a second because he's going to stall out. And I want to make sure I'm on top of him when he stalls. So I'm going to go the opposite direction. Think of it as a sort of vertical helix. Uh, maybe picture a DNA strand or something like that, right? And that's what we're going to do. I'm going to go up. And then I realize uh, I'm still not quite high enough. So I'm going to loop out a little bit more and before I pull it down. And there he is, right? 200 meters below me. He's just tipped over. And part of that's just a feel for the moment. Uh, but part of it's, you know, kind of figuring out what you're going to do and then doing it and then making changes as you need to. But that one was enough to give me my Akamatsu and my 400 capture points. I also loop over because I'm using my new map setup and go, okay, there's a, both, there's a heavy near me. What's going on? Sadly, that map does not show you altitude, which would be nice, you know, a little QOL thing if we could, but it's just not happening. But it is nice for a danger indicator, so that's why I looped up and over, trying to you know, make sure I was out of the uh, space of that uh, heavy fighter and make sure he wasn't going for me. Here, I think he is going for me, but he actually keys in on the other heavy fighter, so I continue to head on. I was pretty confident in that anyway, uh, with a bot mosquito. I'll be able to do some damage. Unlike most of the Japanese planes, while this one does have fire issues, it does not have hit point issues. Yeah, it's, it's pretty chunky hit points for tier 6. Another heavy going for a different plane. I think that's my teammate there. And we're going to hit the timer because, of course, supremacy accelerates everything. Fortunately, being a top tier and being a map with a center point that I could handle like that, um, it made a little bit of a difference, and I was able to get a candy out of this. Which I've tried to determine. We'll talk in a second about my candy strategy, what I think I'm going to be doing with that. But we'll look at the, the post-battle card here first. That is the downside of an upgraded engine, though, as I was saying a second ago. There is, that is the one weak point of this plane. <laughs> and I'll show you the, the fire. Chance of catching on fire is very high. And on this pilot, I don't have room to burn on the firefighting skill. and Nor do I usually take it. Um, I've got the fire extinguisher instead so I'm kind of checking out you know what I've done on daily missions here and uh, we did knock down 12 planes we did not get shot down 17 critical damage that's again part of what this plane is very very good at and I don't remember on the day I recorded this I think it was a credit bonus that I got uh, not a pilot experience bonus but you can see, you know, we had uh, a little bit more out of our teammates uh, than their team did. Their uh, 109F was uh, not doing a whole lot of boom and zoom, mostly turn and burn kind of stuff, which is tricky in mid-tiers. Uh, something you got to start to learn how to do, right? And uh, the P40 down there, that was a disconnect, but not an intentional one. Um, he didn't leave the match. It, it looks like he got mechanically booted you know some kind of glitch or something because uh, he was still flying around in the match uh, back and forth across the map just wasn't nothing was happening there and you can see he got the thousand for staying to the end so that's uh, not on him I don't think so nothing to report there but uh, an interesting battle I definitely like uh, the higher speed uh, that this brought in between the paint and the um, you know, changes to the gearing that I did um, yeah, I can see there, he, he stayed in, so that's, that's, that's not on him, um, uh, you know, and hopefully the new reporting system is working, you can give me a chat in the comments, let me know if that is the case or not, um, but I'm close to specializing this, three defense aircraft, 71 regular aircraft to go, you know, I've already got to the halfway mark on one of them, but it's just not worth spending tokens, I think, on these lower tier aircraft, I want to continue to hold on to those, uh, for the other stuff, so you can see here, I've still got the lightweight wing, I've switched to the uprated engine, and I've still got the critical on the gun sight. 
and those have made a little bit of a difference in just kind of maintaining that cruise speed. You can see the cruise speed up here is um, significantly higher than it was before. I think it was at 400 and, and you know, six something before, um, but now I'm at 420, you know, 430. It's, um, it's a lot easier to kind of maintain that base speed. And I do have that extra second of boost. You know, I've got six seconds instead of five, and that does make a difference. I still have a sub 10 second turn time. That's excellent, but you can see that fire chance is down now. Now, one of the reasons I want to specialize this plane is once I do that, I can unlock that second uh, skill slot for the airframe. And into that, I can place uh, one of the consumables that reduces the chance of fire. So what that'll do is even it back out for me. Um, it won't be great, uh, but it'll be better than nothing, right? On this one, I've also done resistance critical damage just to help with that. And I've done maximum speed to get back a little bit of that uh, change uh, from losing the boost uh, on that one. Uh, excuse me, on the engine equipment. So that makes a difference there. And then the crit chance, of course, with these big guns is, is very helpful. They do have a short overheat time. There's nothing you can do about that. This is definitely a plane where you got to learn to pulse the guns. Because if you don't, it's not going to be great. And, and they don't have great range either, which actually helps. Uh, don't get tricked into thinking because you got big guns, you can shoot far out. You know, again, you need to be probably around the 500 mark. You probably noticed a couple of times in that video, if not rewind it, where I'm holding fire, right? I'm waiting until I get to that 500 mark. Uh, so I've got you know plenty to put out because I'm not going to have that gun slot. And uh, you know, it's it's I'm not someone who's going to carry the gold ammunition, <laughs> just fill my pockets with it, right? I am trying to get this pilot up, and I do think this is a plane that would benefit from that marksman two skill with the additional auto aim, really help dial in those guns and keep it going. But it's also a plane that benefits from the extra thrust uh, because of that lower um, you know boost speed. You, you know, you really need to keep uh, keep that cruise speed up, and uh, so. You know, having the extra thrust skill on the engine is pretty decent, I think. So, bottom line is my Japanese pilots are just not that skilled, and I'm hoping to hoping to change that over the course of this winter. So, my plan right now is I'm trying to grind out 120 candy. Why? That would leave me 120 certificates. And if you look back into the news archive on the World Warplanes website, you'll notice a lot of our marathons are for 120 certificates. And so, if I can grind out 120 candy before spending uh, certificates on candy, that'll allow me to cut the cost cost of the moon bat a little bit. Uh, there's no way I can write out 600 candy over the holidays. It's just not in the wheelhouse between uh, my work and my family. But I don't mind spending the money to assist wargaming. That's totally up to you if you do or don't. But uh, this is a game I want to see stick around. And that's one way I can do it is by supporting it financially. But I can make it a better buy for me in that case. Because what that means is if I can save 120 certificates, you know, 120 of those pieces, uh, not turn in certificates for candy, which is how those certificates work this Christmas. You're buying 600 certificates, which you're then transferring into candy. If I can save 120 certificates, that means whatever the next marathon is that comes along, I don't have to buy the plane. I can do it for free. Uh, and when you think about that in terms of spending $100, you know, the moon bat is worth 50 as a tier 8 premium. That's generally what they go for, right? And you're spending another $50 on, you know, a bunch of stuff in the holiday maneuvers, which is nice to have. It's 2300 gold and some premium and that sort of stuff. But, but real in terms of hard value currency, what that means is 120 certificates. I can probably get another premium for free out of this, whatever the next one is, which might be a tier 7, might be a tier 8, you know, um, who knows, but whatever it is, I'll be able to do it for free. And that'll, again, make this a much more valuable proposition. So that's my goal and a tip for you if it's something you want to do. Uh, those certificates are on sale until the 17th of January. If you don't care about getting the moon bat first thing, which I don't, and you probably probably don't either unless you're just desperate for it, uh, wait until the 17th, see how much candy you grind out. You know, if you can get to 300, you'll save yourself some money. Or if you can just do 120 like I'm doing, you know, and you're willing to put the hundred dollars out, you're you're still going to get your money's worth because you're eventually going to get two premiums. You don't know what the next one's going to be, but you know, if it's not a great one, hold on to the certificates and wait for the next one to come around. Right? Uh, it's going to be really helpful. So, I'll include some links below um, to show you what I'm talking about in terms of the certificates. And uh, if you'd like to, throw a like up, throw a subscribe up. Um, I'm going to be out of town this weekend, but I do hope to get back to you with some more videos. There might be one coming tomorrow, maybe, slim chance. 
Uh, but it, after that, it'll probably be uh, the first of the year before I get back to you in 2024. So y'all have a great New Year's. Enjoy the weekend. Enjoy the discounts. Don't forget to keep up. Access planes are on sale this weekend from Winter Trials. You'll want to grab those if you can. Also, gear sale this weekend coming up as well. So save your cash. Invest in new birds and new gear. And I will see you in a new year.